Hello, amazing uh, viewers. Um, I bless the Lord for all of you. Praise the name of the Lord. Um, I'm delighted to um, be before you today. My name is Ken Mulunda, a born again believer passionate about Christ. I like saying I'm a product of the grace of God, an imperfect person, perfect and qualified by the grace of God. And it's an honor to be before you today. I want to thank um, the church leadership headed by our Archdeacon for the opportunity to share the word um, on this day. And I pray and hope that it ministers to your heart, even as we look into it. And I pray that it blesses your soul and heart in many different ways. Now, the title of the brief message that I want to speak today, um, I'm going to label it in spirit and in truth. And we are drawing reference from John chapter 4 from verse 23 to 30. Now the Bible says, Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. God is spirit and his worshippers must worship in spirit and in truth. Verse 25, The woman said, I know that Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I who speak to you am he. Verse 27 goes on to say, Just then his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asked, What do you want? Or why are you talking with her? 28 is interesting. The Bible says, Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, Come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Christ? They came out of the town and made their way towards him. Um, let's thank the Lord for his word. Lord, we thank you for your word. We pray that you will use it, Lord, to minister to our hearts and souls, Lord. And we pray that it will edify us for the glory and honor of your name. In Jesus' name we pray, believing and trusting. Um, now it's amazing. John chapter 4 verse 24, Christ was speaking to um, the Samaritan woman at the well. And Christ revealed himself to this Samaritan woman. And the minute he revealed himself to the Samaritan woman, the Bible tells us that she left her water pot. What she had actually come to do, she left it went out and told everyone, come and see a man who's told me everything about me. And that is why I say every encounter with Jesus Christ, it has to make a difference in your life. You know, um, anytime you encounter Jesus Christ, there's just something you have to leave. Some of you can bear witness. The minute you came into contact with Christ, something in you just had to change. Christ, the Bible says Jesus Christ is the way, the truth and the life. And truth has this amazing power of altering our priorities. She left her water pot and ran away just to, to spread the good news of this man that he had come into contact with. And this truth is the word of God. Psalms chapter 138 verse 2, the Bible says that God has exalted his word above his name. In simple terms, God has made his word more popular than himself. If God himself, being God, submits to his very own word, no man is above that. No man is above what is written in the word of God. That is why I like saying never, 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 never even trust prayer more than the word of God. We should learn to love God's word even more than someone's because not every sermon specifically has the word of God. Even the very words I'm speaking to you right now, scripture urges us to test everything in light of God's word. So this woman left everything in pursuit of truth. And I will ask you today, what have you left behind? You know, look at everywhere in scripture. Look at somebody like Zacchaeus. The Bible tells us when the gospel invaded the household of Zacchaeus, he released everything that he had. Everything that he had gotten, you know, contrary, contrary to everything that he had gotten in unjust manner, he released it. There has to be transformation through the word of God. 
That is why the Bible says in Matthew chapter 6 verse 33, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Bear this in mind of the Samaritan woman who has left her water pot. You know, the Bible says seek first. That speaks about the order of priorities. God knows all these other things are important. God knows that you need that job so that you can pay your house rent. And he's not against that. But the key word is seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things shall be added unto you. So the Father is seeking for worshippers who will worship him in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. And that is why I'll tell you that worship starts from the inside. And then it proceeds to the outside. Now, the problem with us, in this generation, we have magnified the outside so much. So much. I'm just here to make this clarion call and a reminder to you to pursue inner beauty. The way we spend hours perfecting the outward part of it, God is calling us and reminding us today that we need to perfect the inner man, the man of the spirit, because he's looking for men and women who will worship him in spirit and in truth. We have magnified the outside for so long. Nowadays, we spend more time in our closets, you know, more than even in our prayer chambers, you know. For example, when it comes to the ministry of the word, you know, gone are the days where people used to tarry in the place of prayer for so long. Nowadays, we'd rather eye on that shirt that we will use in presenting the word of God for so long. You know, we have perfected the art of magnifying the outside for so long. But God is calling us to worship him in spirit and in truth. Truth. Truth speaks about integrity. You know, integrity is who you are, you know, when, 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 when you are alone. That person that you are when you are alone. Integrity is, is who you really are, not what you appear to be, not the picture you portray to be. That person that you are when you are alone, that worship that comes from the place of integrity, the integrity whereby your words are in harmony with your deeds, you know, that is the place God is calling us to. And let me tell you something, if you want to know yourself, check your life when you are alone, you know. The way you worship God corporately should not be the same way. You know, the, the, nowadays the way you worship God corporately isn't the same way we worship him publicly, you know. The true worshiper is the man that you are in private. The man that you are in private behind those closed doors, inside that blanket, you know. Um, that is why nowadays we have perfected that art. And I pray, I don't know who I'm speaking to, but I pray that Christ will enable us by his divine grace that is given to us. Titus 2.11, the grace that helps us to say no to all ungodliness. The grace that enables us to do the impossible things. I pray that Christ will continue to perfect us and conform us into his image. Even as we continue to yield to him and him alone. Nowadays, um. It is, I'm, I'm just here to challenge you as a believer. Um, we are living in that era whereby, you know, allow me to use this word, we are in the, that era of um, spiritual socialites, you know, people that move with lights, camera, and action, you know. It becomes very easy to kneel when we are worship, worshiping God corporately. But when you are all alone in your house, you are very casual with God. It becomes very easy to help the needy when there is a camera around, you know, serving the Lord is my delight. We, our worship has become hypocritical and that is not what scripture is reminding us to do. We are being reminded to worship God in spirit and in truth. You can't go deeper in public than in private. That is where God wants us to go. And um, I pray that even as we meditate on this and continue to rely on God to be conformed into his image, we will make this passionate prayer. God, help me be a worshiper that worships you in spirit and in truth, that my words and my actions are in synchrony for the glory and honor of his name. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Life starts when you receive Christ.
life starts when we receive Christ. There is a difference between um, living and existing. Without Christ, you're merely existing. You have no purpose. But life starts when you receive Christ. That is when you start living. You're listening to me and you know you're just existing, you know. You have never surrendered to Christ. Um, you know, there is no life. The abundant life that we are promised in His Word is not part and parcel of your life. I pray that you may consider to turn to Christ um, for the glory and honor of His name. Let's just make this prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for um, the word that you have reminded us today, Lord. We thank you for the teaching of your word. Um, and I pray for every hearer of this message, O oh God, that, um, Heavenly Father, you will continue to conform them, conform us into your image, O oh God. Uh, many are the times, Lord, we worship you hypocritically, O oh God. Many are the times our words are not in harmony, Lord, with our deeds and vice versa, O oh God. Many are the times, O oh God, we do not glorify you in the very things that we do, O oh God. But I pray today for everyone that is listening, O oh God, that will continue to conform us into your will for the glory and honor of your name, O oh God. And I pray that you'll continue revealing yourself even to those that do not know you. And for the believers, O oh God, I pray that you'll continue to internalize the burden, the burden, O oh God, to reach out to the unreached, O oh God, um, to make disciples of all nations for the glory and honor of your name. Comfort the brokenhearted, O oh God, um, strengthen those who have lost hope, O oh God, and I pray that your peace that surpasses all human understanding will continue to be our portion for the glory and honor of your name. We bless you, Lord, we give you thanks, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray, believing and trusting. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you for watching. Barikiwa Adyoshangai.